Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to today's talk, which is Birds of Taman Eko Rimba Kledang Sayong Ipo. The presentation will be by Dr. Chan Kai Sun, and I'm Dr. Leong, your host. This event is organized by Lahar Road YMCA to be and Station Y. This is the program. The presentation by Dr. Chan will be highlighting Taman Eko Rimba Kledang Sayong, which is near Ipo, with a variety of birds, beautiful birds, suitable for amateur bird watchers because of the flat terrain. After that, there will be a question and answer session, and then a little bit of time will be spent on the Lahar Road YMCA, the mission, and then we will end. Some housekeeping. Please post questions in the chat. Please mute microphones and only unmute during the question and answer session. Please only ask one question verbally at a time. Dr. Chan Kai Sun is an anatomic pathologist. His first priority is in family, second on work, and third, bird watching and photography. A member of the Malaysian Nature Society, MNS, Perak branch since 1999. It has been the bird group coordinator since 2015. His bird watching destinations have been in many countries, and today he will be talking about Taman Eko Rimba Gledang Sayong, which was opened to the public in 2015. Without much further ado, please give a warm welcome to Dr. Chan Kai Sun. Dr. Chan, the stage is yours. Can I share the screen? Yes, please do. Good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining me and uh, on, on this Saturday evening uh, and listen to my talk on this Birds of Taman Eko Rimba, Kledang Sayong. Just a little bit of introduction about myself again. I'm a consultant pathologist uh, with a full-time career in the laboratory medicine. I joined MS Para 2000, uh, 1099 and had been the bird group coordinator since 2015 until now. As I mentioned before, bird watching is third in my priority in life. Uh, as the bird group coordinator, I, I used to organize birding trips for the, the Para branch until the COVID pandemic stops everything. Probably, that's probably about two, two plus years ago. Since then, we haven't really restarted our bird watching group, bird watching activities. I had interest in bird, uh, videography of birds initially and then switch on to photography instead of videos because I was simply too busy to handle the amount of videos I recorded. Just an introduction to Kalang Sayong. Uh, Kalang Sayong is, of course, located in the Kalang range. Can you see my arrow? Can, can, can. Uh, can can see arrow. Uh, this here is Ipo town. And the Kalang range is uh, sandwich, sandwiched between the main range of the uh, of Peninsula Malaysia on the east and on the west, Bubu Forest Reserve. Uh, Kerang Sayang range, uh, this whole range is designated uh, an important bird area, uh, IBA, and it is uh, designated number eight among the 55 important bird areas throughout East and West Malaysia. Kerang Sayang is roughly here, Ipo is here, and this H2 is a highway that cuts through Kerang range. So you can say Karang Sayong Park eh, is uh, just north of the highway. The other area along the Karang Range are also suitable for bird watching, but we are not talking about that. Why did this uh, Karang Sayong Range was designated as an uh, important bird area? Because there are some trigger criteria, bird criteria of course, A1 and A3. Many birds that are threatened and birds they are restricted to a certain uh, biome, certain habitat. Hmm? And they are very vulnerable because of that. What is so special about Karen Sayong Park, uh, we are now we are talking about a park, 
is because it is so close to the Ipoh Highway exit. Probably 10 minutes or less exiting highway, you will be inside the park already. Uh, what are the facilities and activities I can do there? Uh, quite impressive facilities. They have, of, of course, they have an office where you can do your registration. Uh, since recently, there are food and drink stores near the registration. There's also a nice hall. There's a picnic area for you to picnic with some facilities such as barbecue facilities. Of course, toilets surround for the children. There are some playgrounds. And uh, also lately, they have uh, allocated space for camping ground. Nicely prepared for you, just next to the river. There's also a Nipandis garden, meaning the, the pitcher, pitcher plant gardens. I think previously you, you need to pay for this garden entry, but nowadays it's already free. Entry to the park itself also actually free for senior citizens like me. <laughs> senior citizen, I suppose, means 60 years and above. Huh? But for others, if there's only a very nominal fee, I think only $1 or $2. Of course, you need my sister to log in to, to enter the, the park. There's a forest burning trail. The first part of which is actually surface, tar. And uh, almost all the time, quite flat and level. Uh, and uh, you can walk probably up to two kilometers slightly over because be before your trail is blocked by a, a river crossing the path. Uh, I never crossed that river. So you can say that bird watching inside the park, this burning trail is only about two kilometer or slightly more, quite easy. Besides uh, birding trail, there's a mountain bike trail uh, where mountain bike people like to uh, what kind of experience right, right in there, just next to, not to the, to, to the birding trail. So you're birding on the trail on a Sunday or when there are a lot of mountain bike people around, be careful, okay? And I heard they want to make some wash tower as well as toilet along the burning trail. That would be very good for birder. Like this is the initial part of the burning trail. You can see this very well, surface, flat, easy burning. What can we do there? Of course, picnic, playing in the river for, for the children, swimming in the river, camping, mountain bikes, as I say, and of course, not least, bird watching. Uh, since around 2015, the park was open to the public. Initially, not very popular and not very people going, went inside. And I realized that since it is so close to Ipoh, uh, I wanted to document what's so special about this park, whether it can be a place for me to spend my bird watching activity uh, since it's so close. And my house happens to be in Kuala Kangsa Road. So only 15, 20 minutes drive, I can reach, go inside the park. Since then, I've been recording bird species seen inside the park. Uh, don't forget the earlier show, earlier, earlier assessment of the park about this IBA. Uh, the birds were assessed in 2004. Uh. So now I assess and record the birds from last seven years or so. Uh. I've uh, found a total of 124 species. Of these, about 17 species are migrants. The rest are, of course, residents. And of these, all 124, around 19 are near Triton, and there's at least one endangered species, which is a greater green leaf bird. Greater green leaf bird initially was no, not so Triton, but unfortunately, this species has been very much poached or rather trapped because it, it produces nice song, a nice uh, vocalization. And uh, although I've never seen Hamilton Hornbill inside this park, I've heard the characteristic, characteristic unmistakable call of this uh, hornbill many times inside the park. Hmm. This is my, uh, the list I, 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 I uh, collected over these few years. Uh, unfortunately, I collected this year, entered the data into an old version of a checklist of birds. Uh, so the, my, the near to species has been updated since, until, since, since now, then, you see. So some of them, those which are not near threatened earlier, might become near threatened by now. Uh, in particular, greater green leaf bird. It used to be not so, not so bad. So these are the migrants. Uh, uh, these are the, sorry, uh, these are the migrants. 
most of them are not threatened, and these are the threatened birds, some of them, not all. Right? What are the, when we talk about birds, we must always talk about the habitats. Uh. What are the conditions, natural conditions that uh, promote or, or host these birds? Because different type of birds, sometimes they have uh, preference for certain type of habitats. So inside the park, we have secondary forest, we have scrub, open country, a little bit of open country. And of course, it's mostly low rent forest. There are a few streams running and a rivers run, running through the park. So we have this sort of uh, habitat as well. Mm. The birds that I'm going uh, so from now on, I will give you a, a rather far, quick slide slow of birds that have taken inside this park. And of course, birds they have taken just outside the park in the car park. You know, there's a big car park in, in front of the in front of the, 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 the park uh, before you enter. And uh Surprisingly, a lot of birds there also. So the things that I've, I've illustrated in this uh, lecture or this talk are taken all inside this park or just outside the park. First is this puff-throated babbler. Although it's a nice bird, although the picture is not good, I like to show it because this babbler is a restricted distrib distribution bird. It is found in West Malaysia, only to the northern part of Malaysia. Probably up to around Ipoh, up to about Kintan Nature Park area. You won't find it in the south of West Malaysia. Uh, this is essentially a ground bird, 15 to 17 cm long. Actually, they get a front view, it's a very nice bird. Next type of bird I'll talk about is the barbets. It's a group of birds that specialize on eating fruits, a particular thick fruits. This is the blue ear barbet, a very small barbet. Sorry, it's 16 to 17, no, not 16.1, no, 16 to 17 cm long. Uh, unfortunately, it's small and it usually perched very high in the trees. And so, usually we hear the call rather than see the bird. Uh, this bird was feeding inside a fig tree recently, last year rather. On the other end, they are also very large, large barbet, the gold whisker barbet, up to 30 cm in size. Very common bird in the forest, lowland forest and even in the compounds and rural areas. Yeah. Another barbet, which is rather common, is what we call the sooty barbet, 17.5 cm long. Yeah, most uh, genus of family of birds, you realize that most birds have similar appearance, but there will be like in everything, but there will be one or two species that look totally different. Like this sooty barbet, it's not green. Most barbet are very green. Yeah. So this is a sooty barbet. And uh, I've even seen it trying to make nests uh, just outside the park, outside the fencing of the park. Unfortunately, the, the nesting was not successful because uh, it was uh, during the, uh, what do you call that? During the, uh, the COVID lockdown, nobody can enter the park. I, I only forced to bird outside the park and everybody go outside the park and do picnic. In, out, in, out, so the bird eventually abandon this place and go some, went somewhere else to, to look at the nest. The next group of birds I want to talk about is probably you're familiar with this style of birds, the, are the woodpeckers. We start from the small ones. This is about the very small ones. Buff rum woodpecker. There are three of them, one family, that uh, forage around the trees, just in the visitor area where people do camping, uh, not, not do camping, do picnicking, just next to a hall. Uh. The male bird has, has got, it's a 17 cm long. The male bird has got what we call the red color and the red male side. The female bird doesn't have it. And of course, the rum, if you can see it, is his buffy color. The next woodpecker is rather similar in appearance as well as name, but much bigger. And it is not so common. And it is a near triton. And T stands for near triton. The buff neck woodpecker. The head is more round, unlike the buff, buff rum. And uh, as similar scheme, the male bird has got a red stripe here, the female does not have. Hmm. All woodpeckers, of course, nest inside holes. Then we go to those woodpeckers, they are quite reddish in color. Might be similar to those who are not interested in bird, but there are actually quite a number of species that have like this appearance. This is a very common 
Woodpecker called the banded woodpecker. Uh, least LC stands for least concern. Obviously, larger than the previous two woodpecker, and uh, not just inside the forest. Yeah, sometimes inside the park, inside the park in, around the town. I have seen this bird quite often in a uh, photogram. Those who are in Nepal will know that photogram is a place where people go jogging and there are a lot of trees. I've seen it there often, and you can hear them quite often. The next similar looking bird is, in fact, bigger and also not so common, sorry. It is near Triton as well. It's called the checker throated woodpecker because the throat has got all this uh, check, uh, checker throated appearance as if they have to play chess on the throat, uh, markings. Uh, this is near Triton, not very common. All these are taken inside the park. The next bird is crimson wing woodpecker, take a picture taken by my wife actually. Uh, as you can see, it's also a, it's a, the male bird also has a red stripe here. The, sometimes you can tell the crimson wing from the earlier one, although they look very similar because you see that around the eye, there's a blue patch, facial skin. Uh, if something you look from the back, it may be hard to tell which is which. Then some of the woodpecker, they are very shy. Mm. This is called the maroon woodpecker because the color is generally maroon in color. And uh, only one of, the, one of the few woodpeckers in Malaysia, one or two, I think, uh, which has got a yellow beak. Most woodpeckers have got grayish beak or black beak, but they have got yellow beak. Uh, very shy. Hardly ever come down to the brighter, uh, brighter area of the, of the forest. So take a photograph, to take a photograph of them is very difficult, let alone finding them. But uh, usually they give away their presence by making calls, uh, if you are familiar with the call. Then we go to the large woodpeckers. This one is a orange back woodpecker, 30 cm. The male bird has got very orange uh, belly and of course the back here, unfortunately it didn't show here. Uh, I have photographed the male and as well as female bird inside the park itself. Uh, uh. So with so many woodpecker, Kerang Sayong is really quite fortunate and uh, very well represented, has, has his, more than his fair share of woodpeckers. This is a bird related to woodpecker, uh, piculate, it's rufous piculate. Uh, there are only two species in Malaysia. One is this rufous piculate. The other piculate in Malaysia is restricted to the highlands, so you will never see that in uh, Karen Sarong Park. Piculate, like woodpecker, also uh, nest in tree holes, but I think they are not, may not be able to make the holes themselves, so they make use of old holes. Uh, usually, the hole will be inside fern tree because the fern tree, the, the wood is softer. This wood, but is, although it's this concern, not, not threatened, quite difficult to find. It's not a bird that you say you can, you, you, you go and see it when you want to see it. You need a lot of chance. There's not a lot of bird watch, watcher, bird photographer, love to find them once they are around. Then the next uh, group of bird are what we call the broad bills. Broad bills are named because they have a very really big beak and usually very colorful and uh, what do you call cartoon like or, 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 or uh, appearance. More, uh, quite a lot of broad bills are near Triton. This one, of course, is near Triton and also one of the smaller ones, the black and yellow broad bill. Uh, the male bird has got a complete black collar around the neck, so this is a male. This one I cannot, I cannot be sh sure it's the same bird, but it's the same bird, then it's a male. Okay. And uh, not only is, sorry, not only is this, was this bird inside the park, the, this bird bill also attempt to make a nest near the pitcher plant garden a, a couple of years ago. Unfortunately, I had no time to follow up, and apparently the, after some time, the, 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 the nesting attempt was, uh, did not continue. Uh, not su uh, surprisingly, it's quite a lot of broad bills when they milk nest, they are almost like mine mine. After they build for a while, then they abandon and go somewhere else and build another one. So it's quite, you have to be quite lucky to get the broad bill building nest and then carry, carry on with the activity until the baby chick flesh. The next problem is surprisingly, I thought I would never see it in the park, surprisingly, there. Although it is this concern, because most of the birds, they are least concerned is because they are very widely distributed. 
That means many places you can see them, even though their number is a bit small. This one is number is small, but very very, very distributed. Meaning that even if one area is uh, destroyed, forest is destroyed, there will still be other birds in other areas. Huh? But this bird is quite difficult to find, very difficult to find. In fact, a lot of bird photographers want to, to want to take these pictures. The dusky broad bill. They are very noisy. So when they are around, there's no problem in knowing they are around just to find them in a canopy. And usually move around the forest in a small parties. Then we have this uh, very common uh, family of birds called bubus. Uh, there are a lot of lowland bubus in Malaysia. This is a very common one. The black-headed bubu, which is uh, about 16 cm long. Of course, this concern because common. And again, it was attempting to make a nest. I think this one progressed, but I had no time to check. Uh, make a nest inside the park itself. This is a larger bubu, 20 cm. Buff fender bubu and also near Triton. Uh, this is this was probably a pair of birds chasing one uh, one after another, and I think they were they were engaging in courtship displays. Some of the birds do this. I've observed before. In fact, uh, spider hunter also does that. Uh, what is the other one? I think some also does that. The male chase after the female, try to smell like the in the in, in the what city it says trying to smell the girl. Uh, so go and smell the the, the, the bottom. <laughs> Yeah. Then another smaller bubu, 14 cm, is also near Triton inside the park. We call the scaly bested bubu. To me, this is probably one of the most handsome or most uh, pretty birds, uh, bubu species in, with a very nice scales and a breast. All bubus are, are rather most of the bubus are actually fruit eaters. So the presence of so many species of bubu inside the park means that there are a lot of fruits inside the park. Other common bubus, uh, of course, we expect them to be there. These are the red eye bubu here. This is a yellow winter bubu. And also the hairy back bubu and a cream winter bubu and a spectacle bubu. By the way, when we end to identify a bubu, the color of the eye ring is important. Yeah, usually, it depends on the eye ring to, to identify. <clears throat> Next category of birds are the birds that are a little bit unusual in behavior or uh, there's some unusual aspect. We call the cuckoo or hot cuckoo. Huh? <clears throat> because a lot of cuckoos, they are parasitic, brute parasite, meaning that they don't. Uh, raise their young by themselves. They lay their eggs in the nest of other birds and then throw away the, the, the host parents' eggs so that the host parents will raise the young for them. I'm not sure whether Malaysian cuckoo is for them. I think they are. So this is the Malaysian cuckoo. Uh, very loud noise. Rather shy and quite uncommon. We are lucky to see that in, inside the park. This family of cuckoo, uh, this is the Malkoha, which is also related to cuckoo. Uh, uh, this is not a, parasite, not a parasitic cuckoo, not a parasitic bird. This is the Raffles Malkoha. The male bird has got a chestnut head. The female has got a white head. Yeah. All cuckoos are mainly insect eaters. Like here, this male has got a butterfly or, or you know, insect. Then the next Malkoha is called the chestnut breasted Malkoha because of the very dark chestnut color on the breast. About the biggest of all the Malkoha at about 42 to 50 cm. As usual, they are fit on insect. In this case, uh, praying mantis. Most of these Malkoha are expert in finding out insects in the leaves. They forage among the leaves. They search every leaf, check every leaf for insects. Even though we don't see anything there, suddenly you realize that Makoha will pick up an insect from the leaves. The other Makoha is much more difficult to find, near Triton as well. The chestnut belly. Despite the similarity in name, they are quite different in appearance from the earlier species. Is the name derived from the chestnut color of the belly, eh? and it is much smaller. 
and uh, quite dif sometimes quite difficult, difficult to distinguish from another Malkoha, the green dew Malkoha, <clears throat> which has got general similar appearance, but it's got a much longer tail, and the facial color is different. This one, I think the facial color is a bit orange, you notice, uh, with no white around the eye, whereas the other one, the green dew Malkoha, has, uh, is different. I haven't forgot green dew Malkoha in this part, so I've done it in elsewhere, so I'm not illustrating the green dew here. Come back to cuckoo's family of birds. We have also square tail drongo cuckoo, 24 to 25 cm. This is a very quiet, what I say, sneaky and very, very, very uh, cunning bird. You usually sit quietly in the tree without making any noise, without any movement. Very often I find the bird only because why? Other birds tend to harass this cuckoo whenever they are around. Why? Because they know this cuckoo is good. usually trying to lay egg inside a nest. The host for this cuckoo usually is black nip monarch, which is also found inside inside a clan sound park. Hmm? We have seen black, black nip monarch feeding the baby of Dren Dongo cuckoo before. Hmm? So that's why the, a lot of birds will disturb this cuckoo whenever they see them now. They just don't want this cuckoo to be around. The other cuckoo actually is a quite rare actually, although it's least concerned. Uh, actually, it's a migrant bird. Right? It's a crow bill drongo uh, with very well forked tail and a bit of scales or white markings on the belly. One of the less common cuckoo uh, drongo that we can find in Malaysia. So good to find them and know that they migrate to this part. Then we come to the next category of birds. They are called what we call flycatcher. Flycatcher get the name because this bird push on the branch, then launch off from this branch and snatch insect in the air and then come back to the branch and feed them. These two are relatively similar birds and both are migrants. Of, of course, they are common, although they are common, both are migrants. This one on the left is a dark sided flycatcher with this marking here. <clears throat> Ashen brown, very common, quite plain. Hmm. Lately, throughout different parts in Malaysia, not just Ipoh, not just Perak, this flycatcher called green back flycatcher is another migrant flycatcher. Uh, it's been very common. Of course, also seen in the park about 2019, I think, a few years ago. I still heard the call, I think recently, but I haven't seen them yet. The green back flycatcher. Hmm. Quite colorful bird. Similar in size, but much more colorful. Unfortunately, I haven't taken the male yellow run flycatcher inside this park before, although I've taken good picture elsewhere. Male yellow run flycatcher and the female, they look quite different. <clears throat> this is also another migrant. This bird, I mean, to me, to me, if I got a choice, I would like to call this our parrot bird because the color of the male uh, has got all the color of the state, parrot state fat. Unfortunately, this is not a resident bird, it's a migrant bird. Otherwise, I would like to nominate this bird as our parrot bird. The other flycatcher is a canary, grey-headed canary flycatcher. Unlike the earlier flycatcher I talked about, it is resident. Uh, make, often making very nice calls in the forest. Unusual about this flycatcher is most, fly, most birds, they make a cup-shaped cup -shape nest on the horizontal tree branch, isn't it? Huh? That's what I mean most people would think. But this fellow make a, a, a cup shaped net on the, vertically on the big vertical tree trunk. I've seen the nest a few times. <clears throat> Unusual. Another resident flycatcher, more colorful, the vertical flycatcher. Uh, uh, somehow it is not very common inside this park. This one is taken near the Nepenthes garden. Uh, this but it's also uh, usually pushed very high. That's why, maybe that's why it's so difficult to find them. Then, I one big surprise and present surprise for me one day was this Japanese paradise factor, as its name suggests, it came from Japan, of course a migrant, and it is a near treated bird. Very much sought after by bird watcher to see it, and of course to photograph it. I haven't got a good picture of this because it was a very dark place inside the birding trail. 
Japanese paradise architecture. There are also other near threatened birds that move around a lot in the trees, so called wobbling bird. Eh? This is a green Iora, <coughs> near threatened species. You may thought that you have seen this bird in your garden. There's a bird in our garden which is very similar, <coughs> excuse, which is called a common Iora. No, this is not that bird. This bird has got a eye ring around the eyes, which the common Iora does not have. So this is a green Iora, which is a near threatened bird. Then next category of bird is a kingfisher, small kingfisher, bender kingfisher male. Another bird that likes to perch very high in the canopy, and that's why it's very difficult to find. But like, as you can see, the back view here, very colorful bird. <clears throat> Slightly related in terms of color and beauty is the group of bee eaters. <clears throat> this is the red bearded bee eater. We call it a forest bee eater because this bee eater lives in the forest, unlike other bee eaters. Other bee eaters mostly in the open ground, uh, exposed area. This is a male because the lilac color is very extensive here. The female will have a bit of red color here. Uh, this one was taken in, in the beginning part of the trail. It happened to be very, very friendly the day and low, so I managed to get a better picture. Um, red bearded bee eater. Uh, other bee eaters probably Pass through the park as well, like this chestnut headed beater. Colorful. Uh, chestnut headed beater, for info, is like the earlier on I talked about path through the webber. It's mostly restricted to the northern part of uh, Peninsular Malaysia. So those people in the south, like Selangor, Johor, they, to see this bird, probably they have to come up to the north to find them. It's quite common bird, hmm? so it's not near Triton. Then a group of birds that we call then leaf birds. Just generally the color is green and they uh, forage among the leaves. Like the Maokoha, they are expert at picking up insects, caterpillars under, under the leaves. Uh, this is a blue wing leaf bird, which is very colorful male, female. Then we have this male greater green leaf bird. As I mentioned right at the beginning, it is an endangered species because of poaching, very bad poaching. Uh, there's a lesser green leaf bird, which I haven't photographed here inside the park before, uh, uh, so far. Uh, similar in this, of course, smaller in size, but the lesser green has got a rim of yellow around here, the male bird. So this is a greater green leaf bird. We have very common birds that uh, Love to eat fruit. Whenever you hear the call of this bird, called the Asian fairy blue bird, quite a big bird, uh, you know that there's a, there's a tree nearby which has bear a lot of fruits and they come here. So this is the male, this is the male and the female. Related, somewhat related, but much more uncommon, more difficult to find is the dark fruited oreo. Of course, near Triton. Uh, I forgot this female bird. This is a female bird. Huh? <coughs> the male bird has got a black head, black throat. Huh? Uh, quite difficult to find. Hardly, hardly ever seen. I haven't seen many of these species before. I, this is only probably one of the second occasion I've seen this species inside the Klang Sayong Park near Triton. Uh, not surprisingly, there are birds that are actually nocturnal bird uh, inside the park, but we don't see them often because the park, of course, you have to get out of the park before 6 p.m. So <laughs> these birds are active only at night. So, but one day I was fortunate enough to find this what we call the frog mouth. Name because of the mouth is so big, like the mouth of a frog. Uh, we call the blind frog mouth, previously down frog mouth, very widely distributed throughout Malaysia and many parts of uh, many part in the Southeast Asia. Thailand, that's why it is least concern. Huh? The male and female has different color. Uh, appearance, this one is the male. The female is more colorful with a uh, rufusan yellow color. <coughs> then we have birds, they are very fast moving. Speedy Gonzalez. 
often move around about the forest along the tree trunk in, in small groups. There are only two species of birds in Malaysia. This is a lowland species called the velvet fronted nuthatch, small bird, as you can see. The other nuthatch, the blue nuthatch, is restricted to only the montane forest, so it's not found in Kerang Sayo Park. <coughs> this bird is called a black stripe here above the eye. And so, because of this, this is a male bird. Huh? The female bird will lack like this one. This bird has got its leg almost like specialized for what it does best. It does best by walking up and down tree trunk, walking on the under surface of tree trunk because they got very strong claws. And uh, some people say their joints are very, very flexible. They can turn, twist up and front. Huh? That's why they can move up and down tree trunk and look for insects caterpillar, and in this case, even a small lizard. <coughs> Quite common in Karang Sarang Park. A long time, suddenly you hear one small frog of them calling, and then you look at the big tree trunk, you see them climbing. You see little mouse running up and down the tree trunks, basically. Of course, these are more colorful than, than, the, than, than the mouse. Then you have uh, a few birds, they are predominantly on the ground. This bird is not actually specialized in forest. Uh, it's more on the grassland. Uh, there are a few patches of grasses in front of the office area in the park. And so this is the petty few pipit which was found there. Uh, petty few pipit is a resident bird, yeah? Then we have the migrant birds that are on the ground. This is a grey tail, usually associated with water. Usually I like to go to water. I think this bird just arrived recently when I saw it. It was very shy. The moment I see, saw me, it flew up onto the, to the roof of the toilet area. Huh. 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 Quite common. Huh. Not, uh, most, most streams, most forest streams you go to, you will see them. Then the next, for, next rack tail. Huh. Uh, rack tail are named because they like to swing the tail left and right, right, right non-stop. Huh. Very troublesome for photographer to, to freeze the tail action. Next rack tail is the forest rack tail, which is much less common than the other rack tail. Uh, I was fortunate enough to see this fellow running in front of the Nipandis garden one day. Mm. Uh, I expect there are a lot of raptors inside Kerang Sarang Park, but unfortunately I didn't see many of them because the, the, the condition of the park is not suitable for uh, watching raptors. Although I can hear quite a lot of raptors. This one is orange because the, the burning trail that I talked about earlier on, it's uh, full of trees on both sides, close on both sides. So they have, you cannot view very far. Uh, uh, so it's very difficult to see uh, raptors and treetops and all those uh, from the burning trail. But nonetheless, sometimes when the raptors fly overhead, like this oriental honey buzzard, uh, you, you get them. There are two types of horizontal buzzard in Malaysia. One species is a uh, resident. Another one is a uh, migrant. They pass through. Uh, now, I think they should be passing through Malaysia now, or they are almost all passed through already. They are, they are slightly different in appearance based on the color of the eye. Uh, so, I don't know whether, whether this is a migrant or not. I suspect this is probably a migrant, but I cannot see the eye very well. Then, there's also a big surprise for me in terms of raptors inside the park. This is a black hawk eagle, an uh, eagle which is usually associated with highlands. Huh? But it is well known that this plus of eagle sometimes also come down to the lowland. Like in this case, I saw it flying over. Huh? <coughs> Lucky. <coughs> uh, there are not many species of foxtails in Malaysia. This is the only foxtail I found in inside a park. It is also near Triton. Hmm? Uh, very, very, very shy bird. Uh, normally, I don't see this foxtail inside a park. Why? Because this foxtail lives in the stream, in the river, jumping from rock to rock. They feed on the insects and all this inside the, in, inside the river. <clears throat> and uh, they like to live in only clean rivers. So the presence of this foxtail inside the park means that the river there is relatively clean. Anyway, I'm not aware of any logging upstream there. I managed only to shoot this bird only because Soon after the, the park was reopened due to the lockdown by the pandemic, nobody realized that yet. Nobody went inside the picnic yet. I heard the call and I went to the river and found him. Of course, I've seen it earlier on inside the birding trail also, many uh, years before. 
Then, uh, this is a migrant bird. Uh, sorry, this is a resident bird, yeah? Okay. I found the nest before, not in Para, elsewhere. Then we have the migrant strikes. Two strikes which are quite similar. This is a ubiquitous strike called a brown strike. Of course, not threaten. You see in your garden, in your park, uh, forest age. Uh, this one was in the near the Nepenthese garden. There's another strike, migrant strike, which is quite similar. We call it the tiger strike. Uh, very similar when the tiger strike is the first year uh, migrant. First year means it hasn't developed the full adult, adult color of the tiger strike. The adult color when they're breeding is very colorful. Gray head, very dense chestnut here. But the difference between this bird and the earlier one, brown strike, is there's no barring here uh, in, in the brown strike. Doesn't look like tiger here. Here looks like tiger, but a tiger strike has got barring here as well. Stripes here. So this is a tiger strike and not a brown strike. <clears throat> then there are the resident birds that are related to the strike. Very, very common there. The large foot strike. Uh, slightly smaller than the tiger strike. Uh, then we have the lesser cuckoo strike. Male here and the female here. Not very common bird, not, uh, although they are, they are least concerned, not very common bird. Even smaller, even smaller is uh, what we call the fly catcher strike. They look like fly catcher and they behave like strike. And this one, I think, probably is a black winged fly catcher strike. Uh, there's another similar uh, resident, yeah, resident bird. There's another similar resident bird, which is almost the same called the bar wing, because the, there's a white bar on the back of the wing. Uh, also, both species are found inside the park. Then come very common birds. The black neck monarch, the monarch species of the bird. We have seen the nest here in the park. This is the male with a lot of blue, with a little bit of black here, black neck, that's why, that's why the name, uh, uh, that's why it's named. And the breeding nest and they are predominantly uh, insect feeder. They feed on the insect. We have some quite a bit of sunbirds inside the park, but I haven't photographed many of them. This is the, what they call a plain sunbird. Despite its name, when you see the correct color, a uh, 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 proper angle, there will be shiny blue color on the, on the nos above the nostril here. So this is a male plain sunbird, not a uh, resident bird. All the sunbirds here are, res are resident. Little species Gonzale, very small, beautiful germs in the forest. The ruby cheek sunbird. This is a, a male. The female bird is not colorful. Huh? Okay. Very small, but sunbirds and the subsequent species of bird that I talk about are all uh, what do you call that? Uh, nectar, ne nectar. Feeding birds, they feed on the flowers. Eh? So this is a flower pecker, crimson breast flower pecker, uh, male bird because uh, there's a crimson color on the breast here. They are all feed on nectar. The other one, flower pecker, is called orange breast flower pecker. This is a male bird. Eh? This is a female bird. They are very vocal and very easy to hear in the morning uh, after feeding on the treetop. Continuing birds that fit on nectar are the spider hunter. This bird was previously called a sunbird, but now we realized the mistake and called it a spider hunter. Because of the slight purple color here, and purple rum, this is called a purple nip sunbird. Rather common in most of the forest, so it's not threatened and uh, sometimes worker as well. Next spider hunter, very common. Whenever you have this ginger flower, they will visit the ginger flower quite regularly. This is a little spider hunter with a white throat, yellow berry. Hmm. Then the next spider hunter, bigger in size, is a spectacle hunter, a uh, spectacle spider hunter, because there's a complete yellow ring around the eye, complete spectacle. Uh, a little yellow patch here. There's another spider hunter which I have not photographed inside, called a yellow yet spider hunter. Similar in appearance, but this eye ring is not complete. And this yellow color is um, more streaky. There is a, there is a yellow ear. 
There's another spider hunter, gray breasted spider hunter, with gray breast. These are all photographed inside the park and all feeding on the neck down. Then we have a swift and swallow. Uh, this is the Pacific swallow. We see them flying everywhere. This is a resident swallow uh, that built its nest, sometimes the building, under surface of the rocks. In this case, I think it, it might be trying to look for muds on the ground and then try to build, but um, build, use it to build nest. Of course, non uh, non non -tutan. Then we have the three swifts. They are fly high. <clears throat> Unlike the swallow, the three swifts fit on the insects close to the tree top, so not so easy to find them sometimes. This is a <clears throat> whiskered tree swift because of whisker here. Uh, the male has got a chestnut patch here. Female does not have. In fact, this tree swift was nesting inside a park. 2019, sometime in, I think April, uh, April 2019, if, if I'm not wrong, building a nest. Just about to complete, finish, finish with building a nest. After that, lockdown, and I don't know what happened. I presume the nesting continue and the baby is fresh after that. Yeah. The other tree shift is a bigger, gray rum tree shift. Uh, you see this is 21 cm, the other one is 15, 17 cm. Much bigger, much longer tail, much longer wings. The gray rum tree shift, not as colorful. Similar theme, theme as the whisker. The male has got a chestnut patch on the face. These are all resident birds. Huh? Then next come the colorful birds. There are three trogons inside the park. And all three are near Triton birds. So you see this part is very important. This is a pair of uh, scarlet rum trogon. The male bird has got a black head. The female has got a brown head. Female and male. All trogons are near uh, All these three trogons inside, three trogons inside the park are near Triton. They are all very colorful birds and uh, bird photographers just love to photograph them. The next trogon, in fact, uh, yeah, I think it's a, probably the first trogon I found inside the bark. Eh? First trogon I found inside the bark is this Diaz trogon, of course, near Triton, bigger than the scarlet lamb. And uh, the male, the, 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 the pallet orbital skin is purple in color. Eh? Uh, furthermore, if you can see the back of the neck, the back of the neck is pinkish. Eh? Just note this, eh? this, this uh, coloration, because it's very, diff very similar to the next trogon, which is called the red nip trogon. As the name, it's also big, but as the name suggests, the nip is reddish in color. And also, the skin around the eye is bluish instead of purple. So this is red nip. Both are much bigger than the scarlet rum trogons. And all three trogons are colorful birds. And all the trogons, the male has got black head, female, brown like that. All trogons uh, nest on three trunks, uh, holes in three trunks. Then the next group of birds are the group birds that jumps around, jumps around a lot, hopping here and then looking for insects. <clears throat> this is uh, called a white belly uh, ponies, the ponies. Previously, it was believed to be a Yuhina, but now it's taken out from Yuhina. They believe it is not Yuhina, which Yuhina has got this similar theme, similar shape, but this is a white belly ponies, insect eater. Quite common in the lowland forest, and of course, of course not threatened birds. We have migrant bird wobbler, which is the Arctic wobbler. Notice the yellowish fleshy skin, not a, not a black color. Very common bird. As the name, sub, name in, is, uh, suggests, they come from very, very far, migrate from very, very far. All these are very small bird. Uh, resident bird, this is a Rufuson crinia. Uh, it built the nest inside the park once. The like Taylor bird, they, they stitch the big leaf together and then build the nest inside. The other prenier inside the park is the yellow bellied prenier. Uh, very nice yellow color in the breast. Slightly bigger than, sorry, slightly bigger than the Rufuson, Rufuson prenier. <clears throat> Then we have called the white eyes, the Hume's white eye. 
Pierce, Pierce name is called Everest White Eye. Previously, the white eyes were now split into humans huh? and another one. They are very small birds, and most of us will be familiar with them. I think some still, still a cage bird. Huh? Some people still trap them, unfortunately. Huh? The humans white eye, uh, they can identify them by White eyes are quite similar, but you can identify a hume swan eye by presence of this yellow, yellow band on the belly here. Huh? So it's a hume swan eye. And in fact, we found the nest just outside the park, at the car park there. We get down from the car and saw this pair of parents feeding the chick, their two chicks inside the nest. Then, we also have uh, common birds, the white rum unia building its nest near the toilet, toilet area. The name, uh, these are all seed eater. They build the nest, uh, a round ball-like nest with a hole in the center. Uh, inside, very dense foliage leaf. They are very small birds. Okay. Besides birds, what other things can we see inside the park? I mean, just in case you don't find birds, you want to find some something else. <laughs> uh. <coughs> You notice that there are butterflies, some of them very colorful. There are bees, yeah? uh, bumblebees, I suppose. <laughs> and also uh, various, uh, various uh, what I call it, dragonfly. We have, uh, or damsel fly also. This one is a scarlet skimmer, I think. This one is a black mormon. I can't remember the name of this. Yeah? There are various uh, lizards, at least four types here, uh, inside the park. This one is a crested forest. Uh, sorry, this is a forest crested lizard. Uh, black toted flying lizard. Green lizard. And also there's uh, the usual garden fence lizard, uh, which I haven't, haven't uh, illustrated here. Yeah, of course, cold-blooded animal, reptiles, reptilian. Also warm-blooded animal. This is a white tiny leaf monkey, quite commonly seen inside a park, surprisingly, and not often seen elsewhere. Uh, in fact, about, I think around the first time I saw this animal was inside this park. Uh, seldom see elsewhere. There are also the gibbons making hell a lot of noise in the forest, and uh, uh, cream colored giant squirrel, uh, surprisingly. I have also seen I have also seen bats inside the park. Food bats. Other creatures, more EV, the horn toad. I thought this one was restricted to Taman Nagara, but suddenly one day I saw it in front of the car park. In the car park in front of the park. And this one was inside the park. It's a scorpion. It has a hole inside the, the base of the tree. It went into the tree. And of course, this one. The common sunscreen is found everywhere in the forest. In fact, a lot of birds uh, feed on this, and even raptors also feed on this. And common whip snake, this is a whip snake found inside the park. So that's all the, the birds and creatures I have to show. In summary, Taman Echo Rimba Keredan Sayong is very close to Ipoh, very easily accessible. Uh, it has a good variety of forest birds for birders. As I say, some of them are near Triton. At least one is endangered, and I have heard many times the, the Hamilton Hornbills calling. Everybody knows this Hamilton Hornbill is an icon for conservation. It's critical. It's, it's going to go into extinction anytime soon. And uh, birding inside the park is easy because a uh, short trail, flat trail, first part of it is actually is park, only about two kilometers. Very ideal. If you don't have much time, you want a quick switch thing of birding, uh, you can go inside there. And uh, there are also other creatures here, meaning that it's good for other nature lovers. So that's all I have to say. So for those who are going to uh, start their fasting month soon. In a few days' time, Salman Hari Pasa. Please stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you. Uh,
Thank you, Dr. Chan. Very interesting talk. I'm just amazed by the how how you're able to memorize all these bird names <laughs> and, and identify them. Yeah. Do you have a reference system whereby you can know match these birds when you were beginning? Yeah. Uh, there are many bird books around. <laughs> I've got a few hard copy bird books. The most recent one is the one produced by one of uh, MNS member. Uh, I mean, co produced by MNS member Lin Kim Chai, Puan Chong Leong, and those. Uh, quite good information about. Birds of Malaysia. Yes. Yo, okay, great, great. Oh. It uses Hamilton Hornbill as an icon. <laughs> it's an icon uh, of protection. Of course, there are plenty of uh, internet references. If you can you can identify, uh, you go through the references, uh, the internet references. If you still can't identify what else for the for the uh, tech heavy computers, same people, you have such a thing called Google Lens. Do you know about Google Lens? Ah, yeah. Oh, Google Lens. Yeah, images. In case you have a picture. Uh -huh. Uh, okay. Yes. Great. Are, are there any questions from the floor, please? Yeah. That's, that's in the chat, there's something, isn't it, right? Uh, Ashwin asks, uh, what are the best bird, birding trails at Kledang? Uh, I there's actually there's only one birding trail in Kelang <laughs> Sampang. Uh, I'm only talking about the park. Uh. Park means the area enclosed by the fence fencing of the park. This is a very small area. The the trail goes from the registration counter. You go inside towards the picnic area, but then after that you turn towards the Nipanti's Garden. Uh. There's a picture plant garden. Uh. They grow a lot of picture plant. Then after the picture plant, there's a paved road. You go just along the road. The road is only about two kilometers. After that, you come across the river crossing, you cannot cross anymore. The road is very well marked out, so you won't get lost. Um, by, by those who, uh, mountain bike people like to go in the trail, ride the bicycle in the trail, then they come out through the mountain bike to get the excitement in the trail. Uh, some of these people claim, claim that they've seen Jaguar in the deeper part of the trail before, but I hasn't been lucky so far, lah. <laughs> so to say. Dr. Chan, when you took these pictures, uh, were you actually standing on the paved trail or actually you, are, you, you came out of the paved trail? A lot of them are on the paved trail. On the paved trail, uh, okay. Some are out of, of the trail. Okay. Sometimes, the I mean, but don't, don't pose for you, lah. they are not, not models. Eh? So, some you have to choose. Sometimes you go out of the trail not because you can't see the bird, because you want the clear view. The leaf in front, you may have to move sideways to, to get a picture. Hmm. Nice. I see your picture there. You are have you are wearing this camouflage. Do we need to wear camouflage as well, like you did? <laughs> I, I would say it's not compulsory, but uh, uh bird watching you 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 have to avoid wearing very bright color color clothing like white, red, bright yellow. Not even shoes because if you move far, you shoot far, you, 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 you will scare the bird. In, in fact, this I mean, there's like medicine, uh, there's nothing absolute. Uh. <laughs> Some birds are extremely shy, like I say, the maroon woodpecker, uh, extremely shy. The foxtail, uh, they want to see from one mile away, the bird will fly away. <laughs> uh, but some birds are very tame. Surprisingly, those colorful, like the, 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 trogen, uh, the three trogons that uh, illustrated, uh, I can photograph from the, from the trail. I saw you don't run, you don't make sudden movement. Move slowly. That's so great. different birds are different. Uh. You have to know the bird's behavior and the bird's nature to, to, to successfully photograph them or even find them. <laughs> Questions from the floor, please. I hope with this talk, uh, oh. you are, uh, the audience will be more aware that we have a nice forest, very, very close to Ipoh, 10, 15 minutes drive. And uh, if you have nothing else to do, you want to get some fresh air, uh, that's the place. <laughs> and uh, if you're lucky, you see some nice bird or nice creatures like lizards. Butterfly, no problem. They're all, all, all. I forgot to mention, in fact, I photographed what, what you call the tiger beetle there. The, there's a tiger beetle, a very small beetle, very colorful, you know. <laughs> I, I mean, no time for me to search, dig out the picture lah, because it's quite some time back. Very colorful, tiger beetle. 
Okay, uh, there's a few questions down here. Uh, Yuk Moy uh, said, Nefantis Park has a separate entrance fee charge. How is the birding inside Nefantis Park? Is it worth going inside? Uh, I understand. Uh, I mean, I've never gone inside the Nefantis Garden because I think $5 uh, early on. <laughs> but I was told that recently that the, 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 the entrance is free. <laughs> Nobody goes inside. But you want to see the picture plan, you can see from outside. <laughs> I can uh, often photograph the spider hunter inside the, the independent spot from outside. Go through the fencing. <laughs> uh, next one uh, from Mike Cheong. Uh, would you be able to take us for a photography tour if we want to? Uh, uh, I presume you are not an MNS member. So you will not know our activities. Anyway, now because of COVID uh, lockdown, I haven't thought. Uh, perhaps maybe we can organize bird walk in futures. Uh, if, you are, if you are especially interested in, uh, in uh, bird photography, maybe you would like to join some, excuse me, some of the bird club or find, find some of the bird photographing friends. Maybe in future, a uh, bird group will consider conducting bird walk inside uh, this park. Inside this uh, summon echo limber bug, maybe then you can join us and then see whether I can uh, show you how the bird photograph. Uh, photograph birds, uh. Um, photographing bird actually is another type of what you call specialty hobby. <laughs> Not uh, uh, just like photographing landscape is a special thing. Photographing model, of course. <laughs> uh, photographing bird is special in the sense that you need to know very well about the birds, the behavior, how shy, how tame. Uh, you, you, you even need to know what time the bird shows up. You don't ex expect to show the to photograph an owl feeding uh, in the daytime. Uh. There are some owl which are, what do you call that? Donor. It means that they, 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 they hunt during the daytime. You must know this, uh, this owl. Then only you can photograph in the daytime. You try to uh, uh, photograph the night owl and, uh, during the daytime unless you find where it sleeps. Uh. So you still need to learn a lot, a lot about the birds before you can photograph them. Not just your camera. <clears throat> what is the best time to go, Mike Cheong asks. Uh, most birds are active two, during two periods of the time. Early morning, it means uh, I would say 9 a.m. You can go earlier, but uh, if you want to photograph, sunlight may not be enough. Uh, 9 a.m. up to say about 10, 11. Uh, evening, probably 4 p.m. onwards. Unfortunately, I think the park wouldn't allow you to go inside after five or six. Definitely not after six. <laughs> There's a loud siren, you know, just before, one hour before. Thing, uh, you, you, when you're deep inside the forest, you can hear the siren. <laughs> so you're going to rush out. Uh, this is a general rule. But there's a big but. Huh? Inside uh, Karan Sarang Park, there are many types of fruit trees. Uh, and many of these fruit trees attract a lot of birds. A lot of birds. And when there's a fruit tree that is bearing full, full, full of fruits, you don't have to choose time. <laughs> Anytime you go there, birds will be there. No matter how many. I see your pictures are very much magnified. Huh? What, what kind of special lens are you using? Uh, for maybe for amateurs, maybe, you know, how, how, how would they choose their lenses and cameras for that? I think uh, this is very personal thing. You have to choose the camera gear based on your ability. I don't mean just financial ability. Uh, uh, I also mean uh, your interest. Interest being whether you want to take a professional photograph or you just want to take what we call uh, ID photograph. Photograph to enable you to definitely prove this is the bird. This bird is, uh, is, is, this is a species we talk about. Uh, many amateur photographers have taken such picture and later realized that he has found the first bird in Malaysia. Never <laughs> found before. <laughs> so you don't need good, good camera to, to, to do this. Uh, for those who don't mind the way, don't mind the money, you need at least say about 600mm lens. Uh, full frame camera. Full frame means very big camera. That one you have to work up your muscles first. Lah. Myself is a bit of meter, I'm a bit lower down on that. I mean, I mean, I'm not boasting, I can afford those big lenses, but my master cannot afford. I'm close to 70 already. Lah, huh? <laughs> and I'm very greedy, you see. I'm very greedy in the sense that I want to take birds that are close, birds that are far. 
the big lenses I talked about earlier on, actually they take birds, they are very close. The bird photography nowadays has changed a lot since I started bird watching. When I started bird watching and photography, we photograph birds at the top of the tree. Now a lot of photographers, they photograph birds, they relax, they take a chair, sit down there in front of the uh, feeding point, in front of the feeding tree, and wait for the birds to come. Uh, so those, those you can lick the land. But I go everywhere, walk everywhere, and chase after the bird. So meaning that sometimes I take birds very close, I need a long lens, so-called long, or I need a long lens. My lens is 100 to 400 mm equivalent. Uh, crop sensor, la, I mean, if you understand what is crop sensor, meaning that everything will be lighter. Why I don't want the heavier one? Because I want to carry another thing. <laughs> my telescope. Uh, my telescope, so, so that I can carry both together. Uh, my telescope uh, will give me an equivalent coverage of at least 1,200 mm which is longer than the longest big lenses you have. Huh? Starting is 12,000, 12, uh, 1,200 mm, uh, mm lens. I can pump up to at least 3,000 mm, which is very, very long. Why I have to use the scope? Because initially I photograph many birds, uh, video only birds, video, you know, I'm video. Eh? Video birds, you cannot crop. You want to show your bird at this size, you have to photograph a video at this size. Picture is different. You picture, uh, you photograph a bird, picture of the bird in a small size, you can crop and make it very big. Huh? So I need the scope. So depending on what type of photographer you are, if a casual photographer, just want to, uh, what do you call that, uh, document birds, easy to carry around. I, I think nowadays there are a few, quite a few uh, chances the, what we call the super zoom lenses, uh, super zoom uh, bridge camera, middle camera. For example, uh, I mean the Nikon 1000 is a bit heavy already. Uh, Canon has got a, quite a few. Sony has got uh, one which is up to 600mm lens, very good RX10. Uh, what is the other one? Panasonic also has got one up to I think six or 800mm. The latest, most high-end trace down is the, what we call the Nikon Z9. Now, technology has improved so much that the moment you point the camera, Z9, eh, the moment you point the camera towards the bird, the camera will find the bird's eye and then focus there. <laughs> you don't have to do the focusing. Yes. So in short, depending on what sort of uh, photography you are doing, you select the appropriate equ uh, equipment. Great, thank, thank you. Any, any more questions? I see a lot of very uh, happy faces there. <laughs> Stephanie, Jerry, any? Hi. Mr. Uh, Chua, yeah. Chua uh, Chung Hock says, any charges entering the, uh, any charges entering the Kledang Sayong Eco Park? Yeah. Like, like I said, I've never been, been asked to pay because the, 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 they saw me, uh, they said, oh, you're more than 60 years old, okay, go. So senior citizens free. So if you are more than 60 years old, I think you let it in. Of course, you see to uh, see have to log in my scan my data. Yeah, Gary. Uh, for non Malaysians, it's ten dollars. Oh yeah, yeah. I forgot that. Yeah, in, in, not yeah. just ten dollars, but every day like that. Ten dollars. <laughs> so you better get your get your PR soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but I'm still not Malaysian then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I forgot also, so sorry, I, 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 I just I just wanted to mention that. Yeah. So for you, uh, uh, if the bird, bird is not a lot, uh, so might not be so so attractive. <laughs> but you know, like I have a whole list of birds now. Ooh, I don't know if you can see it. A whole page full of birds. Mm. I have a number of birds, but there are still many more to find. <laughs> yeah, inside, well the park, inside the park. Inside the park, yes. Even, even yes. from a car park, you can see quite a lot of birds. Don't, don't be surprised. Yes, uh, we got the uh, blue and yellow broad bill. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Thank you so much for your presentation. Yeah, welcome. And uh, for, for if you, are, you don't do pay for this the park, there's another park just next to Karan Sayong, Ulu Chepo. 
I have been pressing them yes. to reopen, but they refuse to reopen. That one I don't. They, they only charge you for the car entrance, car park, <laughs> very cheap. Yeah, and they will also charge me ten dollars. Huh? They, oh, they, yeah, you look different now because. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I don't have brown <laughs> skin, should, uh, yellow yeah. skin, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, la. forgot about that. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, no, don't be sorry. Thailand, That's not you, your fault. When, when I went to Thailand, I tell you, wow, you know what? My Thai friend brought me there. They tell me, don't give them the rent. I go and tell them you are Thai, Thai people. Otherwise, you'll pay through your nose. National Park. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Welcome. Welcome. Mr. Gary also does very good uh, flower photography. Am I right, Gary? Here. You're doing a lot yes. of flower photographies. Yes, yeah. I, I have Sticks. over a hundred orchids, and I also do flower photography outside. Yes, yes. So you are the next speaker, sir. <laughs> <laughs> mm, I I don't know about that. Do you know Do you know Johnny Low? So, well, no, no. Yeah, Johnny Low garden, is garden landscaper. Johnny Lowe is a superb bird photographer, flower photographer, insect photographer. I, I can send you his contact. Oh, okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. There's a, there's a question uh, ask me, though, asking me uh, where's the alternate place next to Kalang Sayong? Uh? I can't remember the name. I'm sorry. Uh, for your info, uh, there's a place near Chimo. Uh? We call uh, Lata. Ulu Chepo, U L U Ulu Chepo, C H E P O R. Actually, it was also under the authority of the uh, forestry department, but sometimes years ago, the administration of this uh, Ulu Chepo has been passed on to a local Kampong community. So the Kampong community decides how much to charge you. You know, if you go during the week, not in the weekend, nobody you can just there. drive right in. Yeah, nobody yeah, there. It's, free. Because it's not, not economical to employ somebody to jaga the, jaga the, the, the gate. <laughs> the yeah. collection will not be enough for the, to pay the, yeah. the person. Oh, only Saturday and Sunday you pay. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm just waiting for it to open. It's very nice. You can drive your car, park next to the road. Okay, start building. <laughs> Don't you want to and, walk? And, yeah, <laughs> and there are fruiting trees right behind the buildings. Yeah. Yeah, he, yeah the car, the, uh, the canteen. If you can go inside, you next time you go near the, the bamboo and see whether the paraffins are out or not. Once the yes. paraffins are out, people from Kedah, people from Salengo, all will come. Yeah. I've been there and I photographed them. Yeah, good. I would like everybody to visit the park as, as, as much as you can, as often as you can. By being there, you not only enjoy the park, you're also doing some duty to nature. Why I say that? Because I notice wherever I go, when there's lack of visitors, poachers will come in. When there are a lot of visitors coming in and out of the park, they stop. In the initial park, when I, then the Kerang Sang Park initial open, I found bird trappers inside. So now they're gone because every day people are not, now, of course, not just I, me go inside. La. The pain workers all go inside. Same thing as Ulu Chapo. I even destroyed the nest. You know, the nest they used to trap hanging parrot. They hang the poison down to the tree. So I would like you to all visit the park as fast as you can. Your mere presence will discourage the poachers. You don't have to do anything. <laughs> Okay, the same thing. For the same thing with Kinta Nature Park. Yes, yes. On on the roads towards Kinta Nature Park, you can see the the cages. Yeah, with, yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, be careful. Uh, sometimes they have license. Sometimes it's uh, it's opening because the I as I understand that uh, what do you call it, spotted dove and collared dove can be trapped with license, I suppose. But if they trap mm. other birds like blue crown hanging parrot, then it's different thing. Okay. We, we were with somebody and they were taking pictures and they were going to report. Ah, good, good. That's good. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Any more questions? Well, if there are none, then once again, thank you, Dr. Chan, for a very interesting talk. Thank you, Dr. Leong. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I think, uh, yeah. Do we lock down or do we continue with the next part of the program? Okay. Yeah. This, uh, yeah this is a program. Yeah. Yes, let me share screen. Where am I? Okay, just a few words, you bear with me, about Lahad Road YMCA and to be at 15 Clark Street. We are about uh, youth development, nurturing the potential of every child, teen and young adult. So we have the programs about the piano hour. We empower young people to lead inspired, successful lives. So we have had programs on essentials of success, on apps like Post-it, smart energy using solar power, regenerative gardening like how to uh, plant vegetables and also rare chickens in your garden, and ebook publishing. Uh, but the last one was uh, by Dr. Ko, uh, and about healthy living, promoting overall physical, mental, and spiritual well-being for all age groups. We have had uh, managing cough and phlegm, food portions for diabetics, and bird watching as it is today for as a hobby and a passion. Uh. And on social responsibility identifying ways that we can give back and support neighbors and local communities. Like we have had uh, talks on urban farming and community gardening, heritage and legacy talks from Mines Dimension, Chinese societies in Ebo. So I think uh, these are some of the programs that we have. So now perhaps we can open up for some chit chats, like discussions or whatever you want to talk about. And maybe uh, or tell us whether you want to do some presentation or yeah get off the uh... yeah that's a chit chat i mean now now the program is actually over so those are busy can can switch off. Those who wish to talk about other things can talk, <laughs> chit chat, have a light moment. Yeah, maybe tell us something that you want to have us present or you know bring on as programs for the uh, YMCA and also for the community. Yeah, or maybe if you wish to com uh, contribute to something, let us know. Anything, Stephanie? <laughs> Mike, anyway, yeah, maybe you can turn on your videos and then, yeah. So how do you like this program today? I think it's very uh, interesting, right? And then open our eyes to birds, huh? and then maybe. Yes, Miss. Yeah. Yeah, okay. No, I think mean, nothing else to discuss. Nothing to chit chat. Yeah, so have a great weekend then. <laughs> Tomorrow is Sunday. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and the holidays coming. Yeah. Fiona, anything to say? Tell us. Yeah. No, yeah, you're muted. Yeah. So once again, Dr. Chan, thank you very much. It's a very interesting talk. Yeah, actually, wow, I'm amazed by your knowledge of birds. My goodness. <laughs> yeah, really thank fantastic. You. Thank you for inviting me. Really, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, we will probably invite you for another one, uh, the one, okay. the raptures. Uh, you must, maybe, you know, next time when you have uh, the, the, you know, the videos and all of the rapture, you know, you, are, you like the raptures, right? No, 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 not really. <laughs> I just, uh, for, uh, maybe I got some, some short videos. Uh, short means probably 20 minutes or so. Uh. 
Uh, 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 then I don't need to talk. I just play the video. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe sh sh the other thing, of course, is show your equipment. Uh. Maybe I think it would be interesting to know what's a telescope, what yeah. is that DG scope, and all those things. You know. I thought I thought I thought I, I gave this talk about a few years ago, but photography, not not to uh, YMC. Uh, I thought that one was in Clark Street, right? Yeah. 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 yeah that's right. That's right. Yes. Yeah, but, but here we have probably a bigger audience lah because it's recorded live, ah. So you know ah. people can review at their mm. leisure, huh? Yeah. So I'm yeah. a bit shaky because I'm not really a professional. <laughs> hey, you're professional, <laughs> right? <laughs> Very high standard. Well, so there's a lot of things. Third <laughs> in priority, you see. <laughs> yeah, so much. I mean, I do there. have a, I do have a bit of experience, ah. And I do read up about, I mean, now, now the internet is easy. I do read up on um, about information, about photographing, about the technique, about the theory aspect. Hmm? Yeah. Because I go up earlier days, uh, when we photograph birds, it was very difficult. We photograph birds on top of the tree. Not photograph birds 10 feet, 15 feet, 20 feet away only. The, 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 lens, the, 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 the hobby has changed entirely nowadays. Yes, so, yes, uh, yes. Hi, Mr. Lam. How are you? Thanks for coming in. Mr. Lam is an entomologist. Next one, I think you present on insects. <laughs> yeah, you are muted, Mr. Lam. Muted speaker. Yeah. Something in the chat, isn't it? Somebody asked. <coughs> yeah, something in the chat. Yeah. I reply there. Yeah, okay, yeah. Is there anything? Yeah. So any uh, any other questions? Anything to bring up? Anything? There's Stephanie? a question that uh, they want to uh email the presentation this presentation to, to the person. Um maybe uh on Chung you can share the link. I will leave this. Ah, I cannot email because it's 107 megabyte the file. Oh okay. <laughs> huh? I think I, 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 mm. you can share the, the link on the on the chat there so that they all can they all can download. After about one week I will I will remove it. Uh yeah, uh, yeah okay. Oh man. So we can re, re give the link to the Facebook uh recording. Then they can review the whole talk actually. No, 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 he wants to talk at all. Uh yeah, it's uh, yeah. lecture, is the, the, yeah, 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 the link will be there. It's all recorded in Facebook. Uh, I mean, link for the, for, the, for the PowerPoint file. Oh, that one you have to give. It, it, it's possible for you to give? You I have mean, to share, right? You, you have permission. You, uh, it's big file. Never mind, I'll, 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 I'll reply by, 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 I'll reply and, and send the link. Uh, for the link, yeah, yeah. yeah. You need to give permission, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I don't mind, don't mind. It's okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, great. Okay. Nice thank you. you. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Bye -bye. Thank you. Take care. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Have a good okay. weekend. Good night. Bye-bye. Good, 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 good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.